The difficulty the Dark Knight is pretending to be serious and so forth, but really it isn't. This film is serious. It's maintained its tone from the start to the end. And we're here, man. The Batman review. So this is going to be a non-spoiler review. So you see, I gave a quick reaction, but I had to sleep on it. And I've been thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it all day. So I thought that this is the best time for me to really give a more detailed non-spoiler review. I'll give a positive review afterwards, but I think... Let, me, let, let the movie merchant give you that spoiler review. So what we're going to do, we're going to break this down into two. Because I actually wrote down notes. Notes here. So, good points. Then we'll get into the bad points. And I'll give my overall thoughts. So here we go. So let's start off with the good points. Let's start with the good points. Jeffrey Wright. For me, Jeffrey Wright was the best thing about this film. Well, one of the best. Things. Okay, he was definitely the best actor in this film. See, a lot of people will talk about Paul Dano, and I'll talk about Paul Dano. And people will talk about um, Colin Farrell with the makeup and so forth. But for me, the guy that I that's impressed me the most was Jeffrey Wright because Jeffrey Wright. It was, you know, at first I was like, okay, this is very low, low key, but as the film progressed and so forth, like, oh my god, like, his character felt so real, and it felt so grounded, and it felt so believable, that I was like, wow, this is a really amazing quality, because it just felt, you really bought the fact of he is a moral policeman in a very corrupt city. Like, it felt very genuine, just like with, um... Um, Gordon in the Northern films, but, but the thing about this is that because your boy Marie said was, but you know what, I'm gonna make this more real than Nolan's films. How Jeff Wright played it, you really bought that. Oh no, 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 this feels like somebody I really believe is this kind of a policeman. So he just he he it felt so real. It felt like he, this is a character that I believe truly existed. So I just I just loved how because again, it was low key. And I love, I love those performances. Of course, we like the theatrical, larger than life performances, but it's good to those performances where it's, you know, it, you, you just get to the real nuggets and the, and the honesty of the character. Um, and it don't to Jeffrey Wright. For me, the best part of the film along, it's, you know, the best, see, the best actor was Jeffrey Wright. The best part of this film was the dynamic between Batman and Gordon. I thought that was great. You know, because obviously we saw that back and forth a bit in the Nolan films, but it was just interspersed. For this, the heart of this film is this literally because they say it's like it's like Seven. It literally was mimicking Seven. I think because you know Mills and Somerset played by Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. It felt like Batman and Gordon were two detectives. <laughs> you know, it felt like these guys were two detectives working a case and trying to break down clues and so forth. So. And the relationship just felt very real. For me, that was easily the shining spot and the brightest spot about this, about this film. That it felt like they were two detectives in a detective film. Um, the relationship with Alfred, it was interesting. I liked it. Again, you have, we've seen so many Alfreds, so many Batman. You have to come with something different. And this isn't like... You see, this felt like, okay, there's something has happened here. Because remember, we're, we're here in year two. You see, I didn't like the Batman Alpha relationship in the Nolan films because it it's it felt very pretentious and Alfred became like a mouthpiece. Um I the you see in the Burton films I liked it because of it was weird because that's our whole butler kind of something. But I think that this Alfred basically so this Alfred I think is sort of the best of both worlds, like he's still like the kind of caretaker and so forth, but he's given much more of a realer character and the basically their relationship seems a much their relationship seems more realer than in the nolan films um and it feels a bit more complex and a bit more textured than in the button films. so I, it was interesting also i, I think even if he, he's not there for, for a long time but he, and he does i mean there's a really good scene a really powerful scene between him and alfred i think and the circles does a great job john Turturro, he was really good John Turturro, again, similar to Jeffrey Wright, who was um, Gordon. John Turturro, again, it's far, his Falcone felt real. It's, and again, he, he didn't overplay it, he didn't overact. He just, and that's why I just love him. 
the best performances are where you just hit the character right nail on the head so you don't have to overdo it and you don't have to overact we'll get to overacting man trust me consistent the matt reeves didn't he, he did not lie he did not lie when he said that this is, this is a detective film like zodiac and like seven it was now it's not as good as seven and zodiac because those are fantastic films and no one does better than david finch but it's maintained its tone from the start to the end there were no one-line gags there were no um comic book movie tropes there were no set pieces for the sake of having a set piece there were no massive huge cgi set piece spectacles or so forth it's from the beginning to end it's maintained it's very serious low-key tone about a city that is the de de decaying and a barman and gordon on a figure out how to stay level-headed in this city so i appreciate that it felt like a true detective film. Yeah, like true detective. Visuals. I think it's Greg Fraser was a cinematographer. The visuals were popping up. The, the visuals were tier one. Because there are times when you can just look at a freeze frame like, man, this, it just looks beautiful. Same thing with, 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 with Dune. So this cinematographer is money. But yeah, the visuals of how Gotham looks like, some of the silhouettes as you see with Batman, the close-ups, whenever, whenever the, the use of fire and how fire was made to look, Quality visuals were, were top notch. You see, people talking about Colin Farrell. Um, you see, for me, you see, this is, and this is just for me from understanding acting, studying acting, and, and so forth. I don't know where, when to, how much to credit Colin Farrell or how much to credit the makeup. It's similar with Andy Serkis and Gollum. How much credit do we give to Andy Serkis? How much credit do we give to the makeup artists? So for me, Colin Farrell, again, could remember, he came up with the voice, the, the walk, and again, it is him still executing those lines. So he definitely did a good job, but I can't give him as much credit as a Jeff Wright or a John Turturro, where it's all them. For me, well, Colin Farrell, of course, he did a, a, a good job, but I think the real star was the makeup. The makeup is outstanding. That is some of the best makeup I've ever seen. Because they literally made him look like someone completely different. And it generally feels like if he, it generally feels this is a different person. Because you're watching it, say, because that is when you have really good makeup. When it doesn't look like makeup. Where it looks like if, oh, they just created someone. Like, this is like if they created someone different. So, who basically, whoever did the makeup there has to win all the awards. They have, because that is outstanding makeup. Which would make the Penguin character so interesting. See, Robert, Robert Pattinson, he was decent. He was decent. Like, he was good. He wasn't amazing. He wasn't superb. I just think he just played the character well. He was just straight down on the narrow and you know, he, he was good. And I think he worked well for the tone that Matt Reeves was going for. So, and we'll get to that because it, it talks about the, the length of the film. Um, oh, the music. Great score. Because literally, I was literally just listening to the score now before I even came on here. Very, very good score. Very, very good score. Like, the score really adds some weight to it. And I think, unlike Dune, the film worked well and meshed well with the score. So the score didn't sort of overrack and um, take over the film, which is what happened with Dune, where the, the soundtrack took over the film. So, uh, but yeah, no, no, Michael G Giacchino, who normally works with my ribs a lot, the score is popping up. And when you see Batman come down, 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 it's like, whoa, what the hell? Um, I like, again, I don't want to spoil things, man. I don't want to spoil things, but there's a moment that Batman arrives and does Batman things. That scene, I mean, Marie's, like, that scene, because there's a scene when Batman regulates, where it's, okay, this is Batman now being bad. It's like, okay, you know, you, you, you did that there. So before we get to the bad, this is more of like the, hmm, Zoe Kravitz. Guess what's about Zoe Kravitz? Very attractive lady, very attractive, you know, um, the daughter of Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet from, you know, Difference World and Cosby Show. She's not the greatest actress. She just isn't. She didn't do a bad job. She was decent. But I just felt that a stronger actor, a stronger actress, again, if you want to, a character that's um, African-American, because I think this is, this takes inspiration from Batman, a one-way cat woman is African-American. You have Tina Paris, who's a quality amazing actress who i think would have done a stronger job i think a stronger actress would have done more with the character because it was an interesting storyline that could have been far better accentuated and embellished with a stronger actress but she was decent she did a decent job 
I just felt that you could have given a stronger act so they could have done more with the role. So that's the good. Now, let's get to the bad. Um, Paul Dano. No. Now, let me explain this to you. Again, this comes from my very, you know, my sh you know, background as an, as an actor. Paul Dano is a good actor. But there's a thing in acting where it's about acting choices. Now, acting choices falls between two individuals, the actor and the director. Because the actor can make a certain choice, but the director will be like, mm, sorry, that, 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 that doesn't work. Let's have a conversation and now let's go this way. Or let's do this this way. So, there are some really good moments that Paul Dino has. Really good, good moments that he has. But there are just some moments where it took me out of the film. Because, but like... Robert Pattinson and Jeffrey Wright, they had such good chemistry and the tone was so real and so low-key and they were trying so hard to really make a very believable film, far more believable than most Batman films that we've ever seen, that when Podinona starts, starts going crazy and thingy, it's, it then starts to fall into Batman Forever territory and it's like, probably you're, you're doing so much work to say we're not like Batman Forever, we're not like Batman and Robin, we're trying to be like Zodiac, like Seven. But when, because my thing with Paul Dino is that, bro, if it had been like Seven and Zodiac, look at how um, Kevin Spacey acted in, in Seven. Low key. <laughs> Low key. So, yeah, that was that. Yeah, for me, it, it, he, I'm sorry to say he, he was the worst thing about the film. If I was to pick one, he was the worst thing about the film because I just felt that he, it was too much over, overacting. And he had to, you have to be consistent with what the film's about. Imagine if you look at Seven, look at the mood that David Fincher created in Seven. Look how Morgan Freeman acted, how Brad Pitt acted. Now imagine if Kevin Spacey came and was like, oh, uh, it would upset the film. And David Fincher would be like, whoa, Kevin, no. I want a certain Tony. So, so for this, I probably put more blame towards. Um, Matt, Matt Reeves, because Matt, because Paul Dino, because there was moments where Paul Dino, oh, this is good, S stay in this pocket, because he, he he was in a good pocket where stay in this pocket, and now that goes to the director to be like Paul, boom, I want you to to keep that pocket, mm, that doesn't work because see an actor will will try things, and an actor is again this is for me who from making short films and so forth, an actor is dependent on the director because. I can view myself. So I'm dependent on you to say, no, that doesn't work, bro. It's fine. Sorry, that doesn't work. Try this way. Try this way. Try this way. Try it that way. So, yeah. yeah it's, it was at odds with the tone of the film. See, this one is a bit of a spoiler because the ending reveals something that... Mm, see, when I get to the spoiler review, we'll talk about it. But for those who've seen it, that ending that reveals something... I hope that isn't what they're revealing because if that is, I just feel that is just cheesy. So that's me. But we'll see. The length. Now, this is this is a big point. Three hours. When I saw the length of the film, I was like, Marie's, you're not David Lean, you're not Scorsese, you're not Coppola. These are see <laughs> there's nothing wrong with doing a three hour film. There's there's there's, there's nothing wrong. But if you're gonna do a three hour film, it can only go one of two ways. There is the Lord of the Rings way where it's incredible, amazing spectacle and you are drawn into an incredible, amazing, vast, incredible world that you can stay in for three, four hours. Then the other way is the Lawrence of Arabia way. It's the Godfather way where you have an incredibly strong lead who you can watch and be consumed by for three hours. While Lawrence of, Lawrence of Arabia is almost four hours. And why can you watch that film so well? Because Peter O'Toole is such an incredible actor and so charismatic. He holds your attention because Peter O'Toole is in almost everything in Lawrence of Arabia, but he's such a good actor and has such charisma and such presence. He holds you for it. You cannot and should not make a three-hour film with Robert Pattinson. He's a good actor. He's not Peter O'Toole. He's not De Niro. He's not Pacino. Why could... Um, I think, yeah, Sergio Leone, I think it was Sergio Leone, who did Once Upon a Time in America. That film, again, is over three hours. But who do you have there? You, who, who do you have a lead in that film? De, De Niro. Because you can watch De Niro for three hours. Pacino for three hours. Denzel work for three hours. 
Robert Pattinson, he's still on the come up. So it's once it's a bad move to try and get Robert Pattinson, who's in almost every scene, to carry an almost three hour film. So that's the thing. And you know, even watching this, I said to myself that this is the film I I hoped Nolan was gonna make with Bill. Because I said, my gosh, if you had this film with this length, this tone, this seriousness, this detective story. But it was directed by Nolan, starring Bale, Gary Oldman in there, you'd have a superb film. But I think the issue is, Matt Fritz is a good director, he's just not as good a filmmaker as Nolan. Rob Patton is a very good actor, you're not as good as an actor as Christian Bale. Now for me, I think Gary Oldman and Jeff Wright is interchangeable. But for me, I hold Gary Oldman as perhaps the greatest actor of all time, so it is what it is. So, but watching this, I know. I wish th I wish this was what Nolan made with Bale and Gary Oldman instead of what we got in Begins and Dark Knight because I just and but my reason again I credit because he took he took a swing and you're not always gonna hit it so I appreciate the effort but I'm just gonna be honest so I appreciate the efforts but honestly speaking Masters I don't think you are of a caliber of filmmaker to make a three hour film see I mean, even for Nolan I'm not sure he can make a three hour film see there are very few guys who can do this. Spielberg, um, Coppola, Scorsese. Obviously, so there are very few guys that can do this because they have the sophistication and the skill set to be able to hold the audience for three hours. So it takes a, a, it, it takes it takes huge 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 skill. Um, you see, I liked the fighting, but the filming could have been better. So this is sort of like a good and a, a bad thing. Sometimes it was a bit dark. Sometimes the choreography wasn't too clean, so you couldn't really see what was happening, maybe because it was too dark and, and the filming. But I liked the idea of the fighting because Batman got shot at, he got beaten, he got punched. So it just seemed as if this was really a guy trying to figure himself out. And you see, as good as that scene is in BVS, amazing um, fight scene, Batman is like Superman there. He just destroys the suicide like video game. This felt more real. It felt as if this is literally a guy in a bat suit trying to fight. So you, so you generally felt a danger for him because it felt as if, look, because he's, he'll fall over, he gets hit. So, like, this is the most realistic fighting we've ever seen Batman in. Because in the Nolan films, the Button films, BVS, you always know Batman is going to sort of win. But here it feels as if, oh, this is a guy... That's just a regular guy really trying to, so you the, the sense of, of danger you felt is a lot more. I just wish that like in one of the, the scenes, like in one of the fight scenes, it's 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 it's, an, it's amazingly well done. Other ones, I I just a little bit, bit more lights to see exactly what was happening would have been um a bit better. Um you see, see for again look, and I think this is when we're not going to a roundup. I applaud the master for what he tried to, to do to do to do here. He took his huge swing. So you have to applaud the, the effort. And because it is a tall order trying to go up against Seven and Zodiac. Seven is a masterpiece. It's one of the greatest crime films ever made. And it's it's a template for crime films. Zodiac is another incredible film. That's why David Fincher is David Fincher. That is why he's that dude, you know? So, and Matt Reeves is just not as good a filmmaker as David Fincher. David Fincher is an excellent filmmaker, you know, truly excellent. So, and, see, and my thing is, you almost, so I think with this, I think with this film, in my mind is appreciation, appreciation, but it's like tough love. I appreciate the efforts, but you could see that you're just not quite there and you're just not hitting the points that a seven or a zodiac really hits on those emotional content levels. You're sort of going there, but it just sort of, mm, it doesn't really hit it. Because when you see seven and so forth, it's, it hits you with both what Morgan Freeman is doing, because Morgan Freeman calls that film. And the way the models are being represented, Zodiac, the acting, the ensemble acting, and the way it builds up. Because again, okay, look, look at Zodiac. It's, I think the key word is sophistication. 
you can there is just more find deeper sophistication in what is happening in zodiac than there is in the batman still good but it's just not as big boy as what zodiac and those dudes are doing man so look man i mean this is a good film make me say it's a good film and for me i still say and people may, may disagree with this is that see me saying because i put it recently that this is a better film than the dark knights and guys are like, oh my gosh don't be so reactionary it's not reactionary i've never been a fan of the, the, the dark knights i just haven't you know because the issue with the dark knights is that the dark knights i don't know what it is you're not a batman superhero movie because batman is a chump in the film he's hardly in the film and batman is the worst part of that dark knight then the dark Knight, the best part of that film is the joker he's the star of the film so and people say okay but it's an amazing crime drama but how can it be a crime drama when at a point you have a guy whose eyes turn blue and then it turns into call of duty which is why i said that i respect this film because this is a film because it's a film from the beginning to, to the end the darkness is that are you a comic book blockbuster film with one-liners and gags and spectacles or it's going to be a real serious crime drama you can't be be, be both like in seven, you don't see a massive, huge set piece spectacle and stuff in in seven or any one on this in seven. It is, I mean, where this is a serious crime film from beginning to end. Zodiac, this is a serious crime film from beginning to end. Eight eight mil, eight millimeter serious crime film from from beginning to end. And for the Batman, this is a serious detective from beginning to end. Now you can now discuss how good it is, but it is consistent in its tone, which is why for me. It's a better film than the Dark Knight because the Dark Knight, I don't even know how to relate to it as a film because it just it's all up in there because in it's because if the issue with the Dark Knight is okay, you say it's a serious film. How can I take you seriously when you have a situation where there are two boats with hardened criminals and civilians, and it's telling me that the criminals will not rush to press the button to blow up the boats with, with civilians? That's it's unrealistic. And oh, the Criminal that throws the descent away is is the big black guy with tattoos. Come on, so the it's I I I take this Batman film more seriously than the Dark Knight. I just see the Dark Knight. I'm like, okay, it's okay, cool. You have great in there, but I can't take it seriously. I can take this film seriously, and I can critique it on a serious level because I'm like, okay, boom. I just like this film falls short of the greats, whether it's Point Break. 8mm, um, Zodiac 7, which are amazing, amazing crime films. Or if you, if you even want to go back to Michael Mann's uh, Manhunt from the from, from the 80s, you know, um, which is a damn good, good, good film. Um, I think that was a prequel to Silence of the Lambs. So, all in all, man, I mean, you see, for me, I'd like to rate this film maybe through the spot of the X. I'm probably round about like a tier 2 with this film. Run about like a see it's see I could almost reach you know it's it's teetering on an upper tier too so it's teetering there because I'm like there's a lot of good there's a lot of good stuff in this you know because see for me it's like Matt Reeves just isn't as good a director as the greats so it's hard for him to really get to those levels and. You see, and it's also, and it's also, remember, he co-wrote this as well. The writing was good, but to, like, why is Seven so amazing? Bro, I even tweeted Homeboy, Andrew Kevin Walker, that is one of the best screenplays I've ever seen in any film. And Seven has a superb performance by Morgan Freeman, incredible director David Fincher, but that screenplay is genius <laughs> that is an incredible screenplay and for this the screenplay for this it was good but it wasn't incredible you know i just don't it didn't feel as if by the time you go to the end you're like wow because by the time you get the end of seven you're like whoa wow oh snap you know but again it's tough to stack itself up against the grids but you see i see i can even begin to have a conversation about the Batman next to Heat, Seven, and Zodiac. It's false shot, but we can have the conversation. I can't even begin to have the conversation with the, the Dark Knight because, the, you see, the Dark Knight is pretending to be serious and so forth, but really, it isn't. This film is serious. Like, this film isn't pretending to be serious or... Because 
you don't i'm not bogged down by massive speeches i'm not bogged down by monologues i'm not talked down to like i'm like i'm three years old about oh but this is morality i'm wrong no no no, i'm not talked down this film just it's there from seven zodiac eight millimeter these films are films the reason why these are good films is they just present themselves to you and you can interpret oh interpret this way and so forth so yeah i'm i'm interested to see what people think think about this stuff but i mean if our ranking I mean, so is it, my my rating right now is like a like like a tier two le level three i'll give it like a tier two le level three i'll give it like a tier two level three I don't, not yet an upper tier two not quite an upper tier two but a tier two level three so just below an upper tier two ranking batman films you see for me batman is an still not number one and then i'm gonna go with batman Re returns And it's just for me personally. You see, I've got to watch this again because for me, I can't decide between this and Begins. Because see, for me, Begins is the best. And Rises is trash. Never liked it. Dark Knight. Begins, love it. I really like Begins. I like it less now, but I still really like Begins. But my issue with Begins was always that damn emitter. <laughs> and again, it's the issue that I had with the Nolan films. Because Begins was a real proper serious film. And then I have a, we have a freaking emitter. In the Batman, there isn't a, this is now the big device because we need to have a device, because we need to have a MacGuffin in a superhero movie and so forth. I know it's just a film with a freaking story. And you have two detectives in Batman and Gordon trying to figure out a crime to track down this killer. And there's another storyline involving the, the mob. It feels like a real film and a real story, which is so refreshing because I'll be real with you. You see, Joker is Joker, but Joker is the best film based off a comic book that's ever been made. Fact. As far as just a film, 100%. This, out of the Joker, no, this is, this is the best film featuring Batman as in terms of a film. You see, because Batman 89, Batman Returns, they're comic book movies, you know. Begins is like a film comic book movie, but this generally feels like if you're watching a serious film an actual film with an actual narrative so for that in itself it's refreshing so yeah man um i was just want to see a lot of people say okay there's not a lot of humor in this film and and yes yeah, bro like i don't think anyone laughed in this film and that's fine <laughs> a batman film doesn't have to be funny depending on the kind of film that you're making the kind of thing that Mark was making was, again, there's, there are no funny scenes in Seven or Zodiac or bloody 80mm, which is dark as heck, you know, or Manhunt, because these films are serious. And Mark was like, oh, I know I'm doing Batman, but I'm making a serious Batman film. You know, I'm not appearing to make a serious Batman film, but oh, here's the one-liner, here's the quick gag, here's the comic book movie drop. No, I am making a serious film that has Batman in it. So there are no needs for jokes. It's serious and it's generally great. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I'm interested to know what you guys think about it. So those are my points, my thoughts about it. So, but, I mean, overall for Matt Reeves, I credit you great efforts, great swing didn't really hit the heights of the masterpieces of in this genre but in terms of the comic book movie because you've seen me reeling on about how trash the mcu is how trash marvel movies are and everything i can walk with this it's not perfect there are drawbacks there are flaws i can walk with this because this is a guy who is genuinely trying to actually make a film where people speak to other people and it's a genuinely real story that you can connect to so even though it's not perfect, I appreciate the, the effort and what it put down on the freaking table. Because I think if we have more, of course, the couple of movies say, but if we have more films in this vein, I think the industry and I think comic book movies will be all the better for it. Like, subscribe, one love.